Yeah, thank you. Uh, so today we'll be talking about a, a very interesting topic, uh, trust as a service. Uh, so uh, we are we are from Tata Communications, me and Sachin. Uh, so as uh, as we were already introduced, so we are mainly working on uh, two kinds of offering from Tata Communication. One is uh, the cloud uh, Kubernetes part, and then uh, uh, a specific version for the edge kind of deployments. So me and Sachin, we both are working on a very similar uh, solution. And uh, <clears throat> so we are uh, we are uh, presenting uh, a part of that solution uh, that, that we are working. So uh, the agenda for this presentation would be uh, basically to uh, just uh, give a broad overview on uh, how the TCL edge management introduction, uh, TCL edge management and where cluster as a service fits in and why cluster as a service is very important. So when we say cluster as a service, uh, so we already have a lot of tools uh, or deployment methods that we have upstream like Kubespray or Cops for installing and managing Kubernetes. But there are a lot of pitfalls with that uh, in managing large number of clusters and uh, managing uh, days, day one, day two kind of operations on that. So uh, that's where the upstream project cluster API uh, is, is gaining a lot of uh, attention uh, of date under uh, Kubernetes 6.2. So uh, this is something that Tata Communication, uh, we uh, we have uh, leveraged, and uh, we would like to show that uh, in this presentation. Along with that would be the application manager. Uh, so how the cluster API that is available upstream is extended, and it is integrated with uh, app manager, and how that could be beneficial. So uh, to start with, uh, uh, so from from our TCL perspective, we are managing uh, hundreds of clusters that are that are spread across uh, globe. So uh, essentially, what we envision uh, to, to provide uh, as as a wide solution or a wide solution or a wide product is uh, a single pane of glass where a user can come in and he can manage n number of Kubernetes clusters. And uh, so once uh, once a user has provisioned his Kubernetes cluster from a single pane of glass, then uh, if he wants to orchestrate containers on that uh, clusters independent of the cloud provider, it could be that uh, the, the, the Kubernetes is deployed on AWS or on Azure or on any of the cloud provider, or it could be on a data center, or it could be on a small edge box. Uh, this edge box could be a, a simple Linux box. Uh, that is sitting on a very remote location, like uh, like a, like a, like a steel plant or or some kind of IoT applications. Uh, so how do you manage them, which is actually not orchestrated by any cloud provider? Uh, so uh, one is on the cluster orchestration, then the application orchestration across that cluster. So when we say application, it could be that container application, or still a lot of applications are in the process of containerization for them. We also uh, envision to. Uh, provide a VM orchestration on top of Kubernetes, which uh, is also uh, quite heavily used of it. And uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, there'll be a generic uh, monitoring and the logging capabilities along with uh, native GitOps integration and let's say copy integration. Uh, so I will, I, so the, the overall session will be split, in, split into two parts. Uh, first, yeah, I, I'll initially run through the concepts uh, of both uh, cluster API, how we explain the cluster API, and uh, how we have integrated with that manager. And as a second part of the uh, presentation, uh, Sachin will take over on the demo part. And uh, we will create uh, two Kubernetes clusters uh, during this demo, and we will uh, see how uh, it comes up and how we orchestrate the application on them. Uh, so as, as, you, as some of you might already be aware of cluster API, uh, which, is, uh, which is basically a single uh, set of APIs that has been uh, that has been uh, open sourced uh, from uh, Kubernetes 6 community. And uh, it is being used heavily now to, uh, to spin up a cluster on any of the cloud provider. Uh, what you see on the left-hand side, uh, the first block is uh, the, extended cluster, uh, the extended Kubernetes APIs, uh, which are CRDs, uh, using which uh, from the upstream, what we can do is like we can spin up KubeADM clusters onto any of the cloud provider as of today. And uh, that has been extended now uh, with multiple bootstrap providers. Uh, so it could be that uh, we use the same cluster API with, with, with the extended version, uh, with the same principles, we would be able to spin up a K3S cluster onto any of the cloud provider that we see on the right-hand side. Or uh, 
we would be able to spin up open shift clusters or open shift use cases or uh, Tata IKS, which is a uh, uh, Tata's version of Kubernetes service that could also be deployed, uh, which is what actually used in our uh, widespread deployments. And uh, on, on the infrastructure part, uh, we have validated a lot with mass uh, as we as we have our uh, point of presence across India on multiple data centers. Uh, we are uh, we have spread across like more than 28 locations, uh, which which uh, accounts up to around 150 servers to 200 servers, uh, which are managed by mass and we are using mass as a infra provider to spin up a cluster on demand. So now uh, once once the Kubernetes cluster is installed, that's just not the only story. That's where the story actually begins. Right. So uh, that's where uh, the application manager comes into the picture. So now let's say uh, <clears throat> let's say now we, there is a specific use case use case for 5G. Now we want to deploy 5G as a service. So uh, that means that a cluster is spun up on any of the locations and immediately as soon as the cluster is up, the applications are rolled out. That's where the integration with the application manager comes in. Uh, <clears throat> so from from the uh, from the from the API perspective, uh, it it is a simple API that you see. From the user perspective, it is very simple. Uh, all the all the automation part that is uh, happening under the hood. The what you can see here in this diagram is uh, we have cluster API that is running the extended cluster API that is running in one management cluster, and uh, using that management cluster, it's a Kubernetes cluster that could be running anywhere in the cloud. And that would be acting as a single control plane for the uh, cluster management, which will be used to spin up Kubernetes clusters onto any of the cloud providers that you see on the bottom. So uh, it could be on any cloud provider. And uh, to do to achieve the same, all we uh, have done is extending the existing uh, cluster API that you see on the right hand side. It is a very straightforward spec that you can understand. It's a kind cluster where a user specifies uh, what version of uh, Kubernetes he wants to install, if it is a uh, version uh, 1.20 or 1.21 or 1.22, and what networking driver, which translates to the CNI that needs to be installed when the cluster is spun up. And uh, the way how we install the CNI is again uh, with the integration with the application manager. And then uh, we specify how many number of control, uh, how many number of control plane nodes we want, one, three, or five, and uh, similarly how many number of worker nodes we want, and the operating system for that. Uh, then uh, under managed services, we will specify what kind of application needs to be running. So uh, as I was telling earlier, uh, if it is a 5G, 5G edge, so then uh, the, all we have to do is uh, create a template that is required for the app manager, and as soon as the cluster is up. We, uh, as soon as the cluster up, the application will also come up. Uh, in fact, uh, the way how we are using uh, is, is extensively with CDN. Uh, so as as uh, you know, like in in, in CDN networks, uh, the traffic spike can happen uh, quite frequently on an unnoticed scenarios. So uh, under such situations, ideally we we auto scale the cluster uh, to to an available nodes. Uh, if if there are no nodes available. On that cluster, or if there are no uh, nodes available uh, on the data center, in case of mass, then the cluster API will be integ integrated to an umbrella API, uh, which is uh, managed by OSS or BSS. That will trigger the cluster API to to create the Kubernetes cluster on demand. So sometimes we see the traffic spike. There is no resources on that data center. Now we will spin up a cluster on demand on public cloud, and the CDN application comes up uh, on demand. It's it's just an example of the CDN. It could be any other application for that matter. And um, spinning a bit on um, the API itself, uh, what you see on the left hand side is uh, what is available from upstream. Uh, so as as we use cluster API, uh, when we create a kind cluster uh, under the hood, it, it creates uh, mul multiple uh, multiple CRDs. In fact, uh, with with the cluster API, there, there is a uh, there are certain drawbacks where it's not a single API. Uh, essentially, uh, we will have to create machine deployments. Machine deployment translates to the worker nodes that are created from the API. And Kubernetes control plane uh, translates to the, uh, the the control plane uh, node that we have to uh, create. So then there are others. The other APIs like machine templates, Kubernetes config templates. All this has to be linked to one another. So it's not a single API. What is available from the API? It is a 
uh, it is a, a set of APIs. So what we have done is like abstracted that and uh, we have one simple API that is acting as an umbrella API on the top uh, that takes care of all the automation what is required for the cluster API. And along with that, there's an integration with the application manager, uh, where as soon as the cluster comes up, it will create a kind multi-cluster app, which is, uh, which is an extended API again. And uh, with the, we have provided a native integration with the autoscaler. So um, we uh, autoscaler, actually this is available upstream, uh, cluster autoscaler for which cluster API acts as one of the provider like how AWS or GCP or uh, Azure can act as a cloud provider. Cluster API itself can act as a cloud provider. So uh, Autoscaler automatically kicks in when Cluster API uh, sees certain, uh, when, the, when the pods are not scheduled, when the resources are not available in the cluster, it will automatically scale the cluster. And with the integration with the OSS BSS that I mentioned earlier, if there are no nodes available, then it will scale across the different cloud itself. Yeah, uh, that's on uh, the cluster API part where uh, we could do the cluster orchestration. So uh, now coming to the application manager, we uh, it's, it's again a custom API uh, that we have extended, uh, which acts as a glo global control pane. So it's, it's a kind multi-cluster app uh, using which we can uh, we can we can deploy uh, we we can deploy any kind of uh, any kind of uh, Kubernetes resources that you see here on the right hand side. It could be a kind deployment, it could be a kind virtual machine, it could be a kind service config map, anything. So uh, a single uh, a single uh, point of contact on the management cluster, which acts as a global control plane, that could go and deploy and do the lifecycle management of the application onto any number of clusters. Uh, so uh, th this might be seen a bit analogous to the KubeFed or to the Argo CD. There are substantial differences uh, uh, coming to that part as well. Uh, KubeFed, for example, uh, it, it only handles this, the CD part of it. Uh, App Manager, what we have is something, uh, there is both CI and CD flow where uh, application build can happen. It can, uh, the test can happen with the natively integrated API. And along with that, uh, also the testing. And uh, then the CD part of rolling out to the clusters. Uh, or comparing to the Argo CD, it's again a uh, CD only, so which is going to be the main uh, differentiator in that perspective. Uh, a bit elaborated information on the same app manager. Uh, so as I was explaining, so now it's it's the kind uh, multi-cluster app, with CRD that we have developed, and uh, with which we uh, have a native integration to uh, GitLab and to the Jenkins. So uh, all we have to do is if we have to use both CI and CD part of it, uh, all we have to do is like uh, specify the Git repo and uh, the, the specific uh, file that needs to be built. And uh, then an integration with, uh, with Jenkins to construct the pipelines followed by which uh, native integration with uh, tests like uh, SonarCube or JUnit uh, that we already have. And uh, that's on the CI part and on the C CD. So uh, ideally, we, we trade, treat them as stages. So the applications that we want to deploy, it can be deployed on different stages. Uh, each stage can itself consist of multiple clusters. What you see on the right hand side, the stage deployment. Uh, so a uh, uh, developer's cluster could be in number of clusters, where on each of these clusters, the application would be deployed. Similarly, on the staging, there could be a number of clusters. On each of the clusters, it could be deployed. And the same applies to the production. So uh, the integration with the cluster API that we have done is uh, mainly uh, for the CD part of it. So as soon as the cluster is up, we have the applications coming up. So that's where the CD comes in. And uh, with this, ideally, we can offer uh, application cluster as a service, uh, not just cluster. It's going to be the application cluster as a service. And that cluster could be OpenShift or K3S or KubeADM that we are using. Yeah, that was uh, on the conceptual part. Uh, uh, I would like to hand it over to my uh, colleague Sachin. We can showcase the same thing on the demo. Yeah, uh, thanks, Vishak. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so let me share my screen. Uh, let me know when my screen is visible. Yes, please, please go ahead. 
So uh, as Vishak mentioned, uh, we'll be showcasing the demo on one on AWS and uh, second on Mars. So we have uh, prepared two uh, YAML files for uh, basically uh, showing this demo. So one which will be the infra provider as AWS and the boots, uh, bootstrap provider as uh, Kubedium. So uh, here we will mention uh, what type of provider we want to use. Uh, the basic cluster specification, uh, what type of networking driver we want to uh, deploy after the cluster is uh, ready. Similarly, uh, some on the control plane, uh, how many replicas do we want? What type of operating system on control plane uh, we want? Uh, similarly, on the worker side. For uh, the managed application that needs to be deployed once the cluster is ready, uh, we can specify what managed services should be deployed after the cluster is installed. Like for this particular case, uh, we are mentioning the Prometheus and the Fluentd should be installed along with uh, on the cluster security, we need to install OPA security once the cluster is ready. Uh, I take you to the uh, AWS uh, UI basically. So right now we can see there are no instances which are running similarly on VPC and internet gateways and all. So once we uh, start creating the cluster, uh, all these things will be created automatically uh, by the cluster API. So, so once we uh, apply the YAML, we will be able to see uh, the status on the API side. Basically, we'll say it have uh, started creating the internet gateway is already created, subnet is created. The same thing we can verify it from the uh, web UI as well. So we can see for each cluster, uh, the internet gateway will be automatically created. Similarly, on the uh, VPC, uh, site we can see for a particular cluster the VPC is also created and the load balancer for the API server so once this uh, cluster uh, gets created we'll see through one of the clusters already deployed uh, when Vishak was showing the presentation I uh, kick started the cluster creation for uh, the mass. So basically, uh, if we see basic, uh, so it was a two node cluster that I created. So both of those are in uh, ready state. Same thing we can verify from the UI as well. We used uh, the this KCD Chennai zone, which is deployed with 1.20.9 version. Uh, and if we look at the application end of these, so we can see uh, as the cluster came up, all the applications that we specified, uh, the networking driver, uh, the OPA security policies that we mentioned, uh, the Fluentd and the Prometheus, all are in uh, deployed status, basically. So if we look at any one of the uh, multi-cluster app, so, uh, in the detailed status, we get to know what all the resources which are deployed for a particular application. So this is for OPA security. So we can see the cluster role, role bindings. So all the resources which are required for uh, operator and uh, their uh, policies, those will be uh, created on the subsequent cluster. Same thing we can verify from the cluster as well. So we can see Prometheus uh, is deployed along with uh, OPA Gatekeeper. Going back to the AWS one. So we can see uh, six out of uh, seven prerequisites for a cluster are already created, which includes cluster security groups, internet gateway, load balancer, uh, any net gateway which is required, uh, VPCs and subnets.
so now if you can see uh, the machine have uh, started provisioning for the for the control plane and same thing we can verify it from the ui as well the control plane machine is created so we will just uh, get a cube config for this particular cluster and So we will wait for the machine to come into uh, running state. Uh, once the machine will be running, we will be able to reach the API server. Yeah. So as we can see, the first node is ready. And uh, if I from the machine API as well. As we can see, uh, it has started deploying the worker node uh, on AWS. And the same thing we can see it from the AWS UI. So it has started creating this particular machine. So basically, uh, the, the main thing is from the single API, we can manage the cluster lifecycle, uh, be it creation, be it deletion, or any upgrade. Suppose if we want to uh, upgrade a cluster, so we just have to change the cluster version here and apply the ML again. It will automatically uh, do in a pipeline format. It will first upgrade the control plane and then subsequently uh, the worker node. Uh, similarly, if we want to uh, the worker replicas or the control plane replicas we can just uh, uh, do an update on a one api and it will automatically trigger the required cluster apis for uh, scaling up or scaling down yeah and uh, just to add even the cluster installation it takes about uh, three to four minutes or five minutes on an aws infra compared to for example the other standard installation tools what we have pops or ansible which takes quite a long time So now we can see the, uh, the second worker node is also added uh, to the cluster. Yeah, and with this, we uh, come to the conclusion of the demo. Uh, we can take any questions if you have. Thank you so much uh, for the valuable question. Uh, I noticed that like, you already answered some couple of questions from the chat from uh, the first question box answer. The one thing which I like to which I like to clarify is when you refer like uh, the data communications uh, Kubernetes as a service of the country, going to act as a of across multi cloud platform. So uh, when you say the multi cloud platform, where we are going to monitor the, all the multi cloud platforms? Is it the data communications providing opportunity to monitor that? 
Correct. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we uh, we do have a single pane of glass where uh, each of these clusters can be independently monitored. Uh, the logging uh, for, for the same for each of the trust, for each of the applications and also uh, advanced analytics if you want to do on top of those data. Uh, there is a specific analytics uh, framework that we have that is integrated. So it's going to be one big orchestrator under which cluster as a service is one module that we presented. So recently, there are something which uh, similar thing which I was I believe I was uh, noting something like Anthos in a GK a Google Cloud. There is a, some service right. called Anthos in a Google Cloud, which is also doing a similar type of thing. Is it my understanding is right? Right, that's right. Uh, there is there is substantial synergy on that. Uh, however, there are some differentiate differentiators where uh, in fact we can orchestrate the virtual machines. Uh, on top of a Kubernetes cluster, which uh, Google does it in, a, Anthos does it in a bit different way, and uh, there are more uh, differentiators when it comes to connectivity. So we spoke only on the clusters creation, application onboarding. Now, if those applications running on different clusters want to interconnect, uh, then we do have something like a network mesh uh, that we can establish for for these applications to interconnect. So there are some differentiators there, although there is some synergy. Yes, uh, thank you so much uh, for your valuable session. So I'm not seeing any more questions on that. If any other questions are there, uh, we can we'll post on the Slack or somewhere else. Okay? Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Thank you.